Welcome back to the Lenton Rouge Cycling Podcast here with Benji Narsen. As always, for the Group Arma FDG previews for 2022. But before we get into that, a word on our show partner, Lacole. They have their Strava Challenge at the moment in the lead up to Christmas. There's also the Lacole Cycling Club, which you can join. There's group rides on a regular basis, often on weekends with the Lacole Cycling Club. So you can get notified of them if you follow Lacole on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. We have the link down below. But otherwise, Lacole produce performance cycling apparel and you can check them out at www.lacole.cc. Groupama FTJ, frankly, I think absolutely terrible season. Two World Tour wins, no Grand Tour top 10s, no Grand Tour stages, Awful for a team, by the way, a team that is not strapped for cash. They're in the top five or seven of World Tour budgets. What's your uh, assessment of their 2021, Benji? Well, if we compare it relatively to previous season where they won six Grand Tour stages, four with Demar and two with Godou, then it's clearly an underperformance because they went from those six World Tour wins, they didn't have wins outside of the Grand Tours last year, to two this year. And let's be honest, one of them was a gifted stage by Roglic in Itzulia Pass country. So, I don't know, it's still a win, but it just feels a bit odd. Nonetheless, all in all, I believe that this is a uh, terrible season as well. Sure, yeah, getting 15 pro wins or dot one wins throughout the season is pretty fun. But if you can't do it on the level that you are supposed to compete on, which is World Tour, then you're not doing it at the level that you need to compete on. And it's partially because of multiple reasons, I would dare to say. We look at, first of all, Demar. What happened with Demar this year? Uh, well, Arno Demar came out and he had a, did he write a book about this year? I think he wrote like a full book and he like teased it with a, a paragraph about any writer that has like a down in a year, they then write, you know, it's not me, it's the peloton. And there may be some truth to that. <laughs> Um, but, you know, Arno Demar, who had his best season almost ever last year, climbing even well at the Giro d'Italia, won like four Giro stages and the Maglia Ciccamino, and um, clean, was cleaning up. And then suddenly this year, even though, the, by the way, lockdown was before that, suddenly this year the peloton's going too fast. It's like, oh, these, these people, you know, they're having too many macchiatos before the start of races, just a two-speed peloton. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, he's like, it's, you know, it's impossible to compete at the same level. It's like, dude. I'm going to go off, Benji. Sorry, I didn't give you notice to get your coffee. Too late. Demar, Mark Cavendish won four Tour de France sprint stages. There was no Caleb Ewan, no Sam Bennett, no Tim Merlier after stage three competing for sprint wins. You are OTL when Mark, 38-year-old Mark Cavendish managed to make the time cuts, however he did it, whatever, he made the time cuts, and you were competing against Philipson and Cavendish if you didn't OTL. So that's on you. The Tour de France sprint competition was terrible. And then, yeah, if well to the Spaniard, you stopped trying. And Guarnieri left the race like in the first week. And he literally was good in that sprint, coming second to Jakobsen. Jakobsen was really fast. And then he stopped trying. He was coming like 15th. So unless Rinaldi or what's his name, Minaldi, the Intermarche guy. Minali. Unless Minali, okay, yeah. Unless this, this guy and like the lead out man for K's bowl, Niels Ekhoff, uh, are somehow, when they're coming ninth and still beating you in Vuelta sprints, that's a different level now. No, you're bad, okay? Stop putting it on other people. That's all I have to say on the matter, Benji. Okay, then we look at Godou, for example. We're going to continue to broadcast, broadcast normally here with a... Uh, factually that he rode GC at the Tour and as a consequence wasn't going for stages as much like he did in the Vuelta last year and as a consequence he's not getting those stages now he also didn't get the top 10 in the Grand Tour so it's kind of uh, not ideal when you're aiming for top 10 and reducing your chances at going for stages as a consequence and I think that's a mistake for Godou because the man has no great time trial like let's be honest so what do you think? Is it a mistake that he went for GC or do you think that something went wrong that Tour de France? Did he crash at some point? Did he? Was he in the break with Colbrelli when uh, Conrad won that stage? I can't remember. Yes, he was, but by that time he had already dropped a lot GC-wise, I think. His level on Col de Portet was really, really good. And this is the problem. 
you know, by the time we get to the third week and the GC guys are hunting these stages, like, okay, fourth and Colter Portet, magnificent physiological performance, but it's fourth. And if you, you know, that's a better performance than Rain Tarame winning on pick on Blanco, but Rain Tarame was in the break on pick on Blanco and the GC group couldn't be bothered chasing him in the Vuelta Espana or on Zonkalan when Ineos couldn't be bothered chasing Fortunato. It's like David Guru incredibly good level this year, like won four in Ardèche, was good in Basque, third at Liège, seventh at Flesh, uh, fifth and seventh in the Dauphiné Mountain stages, and then top tens in Val- uh, Tre Valle Varesine, Milano Torino, Il Lombardia, all in a row, one at Luxembourg. He's got World Tour wins in him. And I'm seeing, I see a lot of Dan Martin in David Guru. Uh, I, I really think they're similar riders him and Dan Martin and if he's in I just think David Godou is a Giro Vuelta man and I know Giro is hard to pair with the Ardennes but Bala's going to do it next year and I see a lot of those Giro stages that really suit him so Tour de France GC just it's not feasible like I think he can get top 10s he, he's that good a climber but his TT is poor and like that first time trial Benji he lost let me have a look 2 minutes 14 which isn't like it's still it's just, not Gil Martin, but it's still not good it's enough. Su- it's such a deficit, you know. You look at Carapaz is losing, you know, one forty four, which still isn't great, but that's still a thirty second difference. Like, why is he thirty seconds slower uh, than it than him? So yeah, I think he's their best rider, Benji, and I think third in LBL, seventh in Lombardia. So he seems to be like you mentioned more the type that is very good at one day races as well. And I think that combination, like you said, that Ardennes with Giro, with Velta, is something he should look at and also the Italian classics. And I think the Tour de France next year also doesn't really shout Godou to me personally. No, I agree. It's, I just, he can win from a break in a mountain stage. He's that good. But yeah, I think he might've even been in a break, Benji, on the Andorra stage or one of those stages. He was in a breakaway as well and then eventually got caught because he was being chased in the third week of this year's tour. Same with Dan Martin. Dan Martin, I mentioned similarly because he also was at the tour, incredible level third week, but that's not good enough to beat Pogaccio, Carapaz and and Jonas Vingegaard. So I think they're not sending necessarily the riders to the right races. Now I understand there is sponsor that you know there's something with with no Tibo Pino in the wings we haven't mentioned by the way Pino sort of slowly coming back the guy probably the highest paid on the team he's obviously on the team for next year it it puts a lot of pressure on David Godou when normally you'd pair Pino and Demar at the tour and then Godou should go Giro Vuelta that's quite that's quite good I think a lot of teams would be jealous of that frankly but Pino took some time off racing and then came back this year and actually did a fair few race days did Tour of Luxembourg uh, fifth at Copa Bernocchi and look, looked okay, but not like 2019 shape. So we'll see for him next year. That's an unknown for us. I think DeMar's the bigger disappointment than Godou and um, Parry Tour win is not going to change what that season really was from him. But what do you think about, for example, the pink jersey Valter gets in the Giro? What does that do for a team like Rupama compared to a team like Wanti, for example? I don't know how big the Giro is in France or for their sponsors. I don't know. It would have been pretty good <laughs> uh, next year, Benji, with the Hungarian yeah. wearing, wearing it, but he what, there wasn't the Hungary, the Grande, uh, Grande Partenza this year. I think it's good, but um, yeah, I think that was good. That was, that, was a, that was a positive, certainly a positive for their season. Otherwise, like their wins, sorry to uh, harp on it before we move on to their transfers, but yeah, like 20 they, – they, actually don't often win that many world tour races benji like i'm looking back at like 19 they won four world tour races although there was a giro stage there was a tour de france stage with pino they usually there was 2020 uh they still only won that's pretty good but six world tour races giro and vuelta but they're not they rarely win a parany stage or a a Criterium de dauphine stage etc or a uae tour but like they're not regularly winning and I think the problem is, just before we get into transfers, I just want to explain to people, Groupama FTJ, one of them, can't remember which, is like a, a lottery maker, bookmaker, gambling company. And so just like in many countries, gambling is a regulated activity and you need a license from the government, like in Australia, and often 
Uh, there's some monopolistic benefits to having that license. But in return, I understand in France, they have to give some of that money back to like French sporting teams. So the commercial, like Mark Matteo appears to have the safest job in cycling. He like does he have any KPIs? Does he have to hit any wins? Because they kind of have to give the money, and then you see a lot of the riders on the team. It's like like they wouldn't be on a lot of other world tour teams. So that's the sort of structure of the team. There's not that imperative like a you even a UAE Benji, which doesn't have like it's not like Yumbo with commercial sponsors. The sponsors of UAE they still want results. Uh, so it's yeah that's. To set up with FTJ and perhaps that's a reason why we don't see some smart decisions. But their transfers, Benji, what do you think of the the outgoing ones? Uh, a couple of retirements as well. I think that William Bonnet was certainly a, a stone, a rock uh, that was always there in FTJ in the last few years. Often a rider that they could count on as the road captain, for example. The larger, honestly, it's been a while since I've heard the name, so I forgot that he was on the team last year as well. But um, the majority of his races in 2021 were DNFs, so that might be the reason why he didn't offer too much to the team, so I don't see too much going away there. We've got Benjamin Thomas, who's leaving for Cofidis. I feel like Thomas is a good rider. Uh, I spoke about him on the uh, Cofidis podcast quite a bit. I think that's a bit of a loss, but it's not irreplaceable, certainly. Uh, Roman Segler, he's currently not actually known to go to which team. We don't know which team he's going to go to. I'd put him in the domestique territory in those 1.1 pro kind of races. I don't believe he was going to move the needle in many of the races. Uh, he could do some work as a mountain domestique, but nothing too crazy either. So definitely not irreplaceable. Brunel's the interesting one, I feel like, because if I go back in my memory to like, was it 2018? There was this year where Brunel was winning stuff and I haven't seen him win stuff recently. Also don't see it on his previous palm rest to be honest but i think uh, i recall something in besage or something in the past although i can't find it on, on his results but yes besage 2020 he started winning there he got flat at the end and uh then this year he hasn't really gone on to do better than that he's kind of stagnated and i think that's one of the reasons that they let him go and i think they actually said something about letting him actually go i'm kind of surprised that he went to uae because just felt like an odd team to get Alexis Brunel in that team. Was a bit of a punch type rider. So uh, in the end, not that irreplaceable. So with all these transfers going out, I've got one opinion and it's they're all replaceable. And do you have the same feeling? Yeah, Benjamin Thomas is probably the best of them. But again, not a, as you said, not a world beater. And two of those riders are, were on the out anyway, retiring. So Definitely replaceable guys. Uh, I would say Quentin Pache is now going to their incoming riders. Pache is in from BNB. He was pretty good in breaks in the, maybe the tour in 2020. He's never yep. won a race. 29. He's he's fine. Like he's fine, but yeah, not probably not going to win panache, a race. Panache, man, the panache. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bram Welton's 24 on Arkea Samsic won his first race at Tour de Vendée like this year at the end of the season he yep. actually seems okay but he's like a a 1-1 one, 1-2 one, one, sprinter that they can send to those sort of races which they do a lot of and seem to like like Pauli Normand or something and he can do that instead of Demar Askey comes in from their Conti team he's actually really good British rider and got some he's 20 years old he won a Ronda Lizard stage third and fourth in Tour de l'Avenir stages fifth in the U23 World Chance Road Race and she's sprinty right yeah he's I think he's good like? don't you reckon he could be good at a lot of those sort of Britney races they do Benji like with a few little like even at World uh, uh, British National Champs he was quite good in the in the elite men's race I was looking at Partially doing, yes, indeed, uh, the sprinty type races at 1.1, stuff like that, but also the partially cobbly races, because my first memory of Louis Oski was Le Samain 2020, I think, or the Le Samain where David Decker, I think, got a top three. That Le Samain we saw Oski in the last, like, 30 kilometers still being in a group that decent cobblers were uh, surviving in. So I guess he's on paper doable on cobbles as well, and I think... Uh, that combined with getting over climbs, not crazy climbs, of course, but hills, short, punchy bergs, for example, and having a sprint at the end could be a very uh, versatile rider in 
who knows, anything from the likes of a Visage to a smaller cobble race. Yeah, I think I think it's great. And he's part of the two I really like, Benji. Like Michael, Michael Storer, who has come into everyone's sort of consciousness in the Vuelta Espana, 24-year-old, turning 25 in February, Australian, who was on DSM and he was developing slowly at DSM. He was on their World Tour team, 18, 19, 20. This was his Very fourth, slowly. Yeah, fourth <laughs> year in 21. This year he won a stage and GC at Tour de Lain, which Thibaut Pinot has won before. And I think after, I don't know when the contract negotiations happened, but whether it was then or before then, he was signed to FDJ on a two-year deal pre-Vuelta wins. So FDJ should have him on a bit of a bargain given that he was literally crushing dudes in the world yeah. so like he had Bardet and breaks i remember that with a break he won stage 10 benji when the one where Rolich crashed i think he won that one he was in a break with like van seven on or bagioli and he's right away from the mouth closed on that one climb of the day so what do you expect from him are you worried that there's a little bit of regression. Do you think they're going to want him to be an actual like a grand tour gc guy because that's my concern that they're like oh you're really good Let's put you in GC. I wouldn't go there yet. I would personally put him in a in a Grand Tour as a stage hunter first before looking at GC and smaller one week races. And I think that would be the wisest thing for Groupama to do as well, because then you're honestly taking less risk. If you send him to a Grand Tour directly and you say, "Oh, GC," then you're taking away any possibility of going for stages. And if you test it out in a one week race first, that's much better. But I can also start in a non World Tour one week race, of course send them to Tour de Var, for example. Then again, that probably doesn't have a time trial, for example. So yeah, all in all, I believe that they're, they could make the wrong decision, but I don't know. I generally don't know what they're going to choose, but I would feel odd if they send them to a Grand Tour and expect them to ride GC directly. But then again, the Giro really does fit a rider that has no proven time trial capabilities. True. Like if he, so what he can't TT, they'll it doesn't matter, as you said. I'm sure you could cobble together a, a competent one. I think. Imagine, imagine Store and David Gudu and Vuelta breaks together. That is, if they're both on form, that is nasty. I mean, Stefan Kung as well. Giro as well. Yeah, just exact as, as I'm saying. And then both to <laughs> the Giro Vuelta. You know, to the tour for marketing purposes. Uh, yeah, if he wants to do it, I quite like him to do that. But yeah, they don't. <laughs> they don't have a lot of incoming transfers. And this is, I think, this is an appropriate place to talk about it, Benji. They have their Conti team, which was incredibly successful this year. Their development team, in terms of the guys they're bringing through, uh, who was that? Marin Vandenberg, Lawrence Pithy, I think, fan of the podcast. Shout out to him, Alexander Ballmer, who's gone to Mitchelton uh, to Bike Exchange. We mentioned already, but like, I think they. They let four of the five guys go who went world tour, or three of the four, and they only kept ASCII. Like Vandenberg won Orleans Nations Grand Prix, third at Paris Tour Espoirs, won two, three sta- no, two stages at Wellness Team, two stages at Tour de Lavigny, and they let him go. So that's where I look at Benji. I'm like, okay, so there's budget issues, but wouldn't you rather, would you rather have 22 year old Marin Vandenberg or Bram Welton? Mm, I would rather have. They're both Dutch. Marijn van den Berg? Yeah, I think it's not close. I think I think easily van den Berg. I, I, would, I think he's really good. I mean, I, mean, I don't, you don't need to be a genius <laughs> to say that. He did well at big, great, big U23 races. And yeah, so that's that's interesting that he went to education first. Uh, otherwise, Benji, the, the man who we're pro- I'm probably not respecting enough, if I'm clearly saying, you know, David Goethe, best rider on the team, is Stefan Kuhn, who... I think was the second best rider on the team this year, European champs ITT, Canada Nation, fourth in Olympics, third, uh, a lot of second and third, a lot of second thirds here. But he, he won GC at Volta de la Comunitat Valenciana because Henrik Massen then crashed in the TT. But um, definitely I think his best year, it, it says that by points-wise. What do you think, I don't know, where do you think he fits in, in with them in terms of Demar, Pino, the Tour, etc.? It really depends. Obviously, you have, you can't send him to the Giro with only one time yeah, trial in out. there. Like that's an obvious one. I think the Tour is definitely the team he'll go to. Uh, the race he'll go to. <laughs> the Tour de France is not a team. But um, I think that 
his main issue is that there's so many people breaking through time trial wise right now. Even in his own country, Bissiger is a rider that is definitely starting to compete with him left and right as well. And I think he's beaten um, Stefan Kung as well at a certain point. I think he's also been beaten by Kung at Tour de Suisse this year. So it's kind of either one or the other at some places. And they've got a similar sense in the fact that they're not amazing at the 40k time trials. They're better at the 20k time trials. And to be honest, if we look at the Tour de France then, and we see Stefan Kuhn getting fourth in the final time trial, we see that in the initial time trial, that stage 5-1, he's getting second behind Pogacar. There's always someone better, and that's the that's the bad thing about being a time trial, is you only have a certain amount of days to strike on, and if someone's better on those days, well, then you're not getting the victory and you're not getting the results for your team. And he did so at Tour de Suisse, he did so at two races that Obama probably doesn't care too much about, which was uh, the national uh, European championships and national championships. So that's for the Swiss country and not for Groupama. So I don't know. All in all, I feel like he can definitely do more than just time trolling. We saw him at Roubaix quite a few times in the past. Ken Wilhelm, that attack that yeah. got countered by Nathan von Hoydong. And I think his problem is obviously that he can time troll, he can get over cobbles, but he doesn't have a kick to sprint. So he's definitely going to lose every sprint that he gets into. And then we look at the race is like the world championships he was fought on. Yes, he can also get over the hills. He also get beaten in the sprint. Like he's versatile, but it's gonna be troublesome to win stuff like that. Even the Benelux tour, he can top five that because of his time trial capabilities and because of his cobble capabilities and his hill capabilities. But it's unlikely that he'll win it because you need to be able to beat people to get bonus seconds on stage and stuff like that that eventually lead to other people winning those races. I think a lot of teams would be jealous of FDJ having Stefan Kuhn when they saw the parkour of the Tour de France next year. I think having a top five time trials, particularly in the in the world, particularly for the distance, a 13-kilometer technical, you know, Copenhagen, maybe wet, maybe windy, uh, longer than prologue time trial where the yellow jerseys on offer, I think, you know, Bissiger, Ghana, Van Aert, Stefan Kuhn, I'm probably missing somebody, even a poll. No, he's not doing it. But the a lot of teams would be jealous because anyone can – Kung can win this. He can. There is a, a possibility that he wins this, but there's some teams who just can't take the yellow jersey first day. Uh, maybe even Dennis can at Yumbo Vismo or Dumoulin as well, Yumbo. But that's why I think he has huge value. Obviously, he has to go to the tour. Uh, but we're now getting into – I guess, uh, our teams for next year, Benji. I, I just, as a reminder to everybody, Repino just, you know, he hurt his back in the in the knee stage of the Tour de France last year and then continued and finished the race in not being competitive but just finished the race, nursing that injury. I think he did come eighth at Orsi Uh But then he was out of the, he was supposed to do the Giro this year but he still had lingering back pain. So, I just don't trust this team, frankly. Like, that's just, and it's, they're not the only team that does this. And other teams, like, remember, Dumoulin wasn't happy, I guess, with his knee stuff at, at DSM, Sunweb, then, you know, that's just, I just don't think they might manage those sort of things pretty well. So I worry about Pino, but we'll see where he is next year and see what Benji thinks, where, where he's going to go and what race he's going to target. But Cobbles, Benji, uh, for FDJ, I'll throw some names out. Connor Volovos. Uh, Stefan Kung, Genietz, Lars Vandenberg, any, any others? I would put the Marin Cobble races, Fabian Linhardt, uh, Scottson. Those are the riders that usually did it already because you don't have a very uh, in-depth team for this. Louis Oski is a rider I'd put in there as well. Oh, yeah, so I'm already pointing at those youngsters that they just signed to get into a race like that to do it for them because they don't exactly have a full squad of riders that can do it on those races. And also a rider that I feel like in top 10, well, top, top 15 every monument if he tried it in his career. And that is uh, Valentin Madua. I think he got top 40 this year at RVV, but he had a bit of a, a downer year when he came to the monuments compared to previous years. He got 14th last year at RVV. So I think Madua was a big gun for those races as well. Yeah, true. And he, wow, he has a lot of top 20s throughout the year. Like he is incredibly He's consistent. so versatile. Like... But just no, he won probably no more, but yet not a lot of wins. But yeah, wow, as you mentioned it, Benji, like he, he went three years between wins before Pauline Normand this year, Pauline Normand as a 
But yeah, he, he's another rider who I think is really, really good, but a lot of races uh, as well. But I, I agree with you, Benji. Maybe uh, Ludvigsen in that team, uh, if you didn't mention him. I think they're all right. I, that's definitely – oh, Jake Stewart. Jake Stewart's on their team as well. Jake Stewart obviously has to do Omelette. Is Sinkledum still there? Yeah. It's a pretty good team. Join as well, I guess, Sinkledum. I don't think it's too bad, actually, um, for Cobbles. There are certainly worse ones out there. Now, obviously, they're not going to have a top four or five favorite for RVV. Uh, but Roubaix, they have options. Uh, Stefan Kuhn crashed this year. They actually have like legitimate options, and particularly for like the early ones that you like, Canna, Demar, can you make it through? You know, like Brugge de Pana, Omloop, Kerner, they should be up there cont- being competitive in those races. Uh, but now the Arden Benji, this is pretty simple to me. Stora, Godu, and then Valentin Madoua, Pacher, Reichenbach, Valter. Anyone else want to go? I'd uh, I'd put in Molar as well. He topped in Flesh, sure. I think, in at some point. I think 2018, 2017. Obviously, uh, some time ago, but it does show the capability of punching. He seems to have fallen into a bit of a uh, a downer year outside of Duvar because I do recall him doing pretty good punchy races there together with Madua in breakaways and so forth. Or actually, the last stage, I think he wasn't in a breakaway. He just did very well. So I think he's one of those riders you send to the. Uh, for the Healy races as well, but uh, they don't have that rider that can compete with the big guns in, in those Hill races, and Godou was the best option in LBL, and he's very likely to end up in a group with someone faster than him. That's the problem, is that he can't, like, he can't. I don't see a full saying 2019 move from him where he gets, drops the entire group, and that's sort of, Maybe he can beat Woods in a sprint, a flat sprint, but he's not beating Alaphilippe and, and Pogaccia most of the time. Uh, but yeah, they got they got options, and but I, again, I don't see them. I don't see them winning those races. And I would, I wouldn't. If David Godu needs to not do one of those races to be fresh for the Giro, I would keep him out of those races because he's more realistic that he's going to do well and win a Giro stage if he properly targets it. Uh, but Giro Team Benji, knowing what we know about how hard, how little sprint stages there are on the Tour de France and how well Demar did in the Giro last year and how the sprint field is sometimes weaker than the Tour, not always, what, what do you think their Tour team is? I know me and you, I want Stora and Godu to go, but do that, does Demar go as well? Well, you mean to the France or Giro? Giro. Because, oh, okay. Because you said to the France, I was like so confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the Giro, I would indeed look at the likes of Ogudu and Storer, but I I just don't see Godu to the Giro happening from a Groupama standpoint, but that's irrelevant today. Today it's our opinion that yeah, matters. That's and um, the mark going for the sprints would be very much more ideal for the Giro, like you mentioned. And the question there is, you send an entire sprint train, and then I would dare to say yes. And the fact is, if you've got a rider that is going for GC in the Giro, well, likely, Ineos is going to be there with a team. Then again, if it's Carapaz's leader, they might have a very shit team surrounding Carapaz, but they will have a team that will be pacing on many of the stages, and you can just sit in their wheel and use their train. I think, yeah, I, I kind of, you, you've convinced me almost. I think Pino to the Giro. I think it, uh, this is on the I assumption. say that. <laughs> no, but you're like, oh, go to, should go to the tour, or will probably go to the tour. And I was like, yeah, you're right, probably will. Um, and then he's got to be there, folks, the Arden. Yeah, maybe uh, Volta obviously has to go with the Hungarian Grand Prix. Yeah, and, certainly. On their path for the, for the Giro, so he's in. I would send Stora. I would send uh, probably yeah, the sprint train and then Pino with no pressure. I think that was the plan this year. Just do it again. It's got no TTKs. Do it again. Send Thibaut Pino. Get his Grand Tour legs back under him. And a Rudy Mola. And I think a Rudy Mola in breakaways is certainly good enough. He's If I think of that Lafay stage win, Benji, at the Giro this year, Rudy Mola, he can, he, you know, he can win that level stage, uh, level of stage, rather. And um, yeah, I think... It's an okay team. It has it has options. If you have a story, you can win a, a Giro break stage. If you have Demar, you should theoretically be able to win uh, sprint stages. And if you have Pino, 
in some semblance of decent form, he should be able to be competitive for a top 10 on GC. Yeah. Okay. Tour de France, Godou, Stefan Kuhn, Madua, uh, Jesus, Bruno <laughs> Armirail, Clement Davy, 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 and... Um, <laughs> The man did not ride a world uh, a Grand Tour in 2021. Do you think that Davy's going to a Grand Tour? I just was to the I tour directly a, straight I just up. I picked around a French name. I hadn't said yet, <laughs> said yet. Um, <laughs> Pacher Reichenbach. I'm going to climb. Should it. double re- it. The Marger Tour. I mean, yeah, sure. If he wants to uh, listen, of course, Benji. I'm I'm not saying to demand demand any of those book those small races. Not no. You know, how on- are they supposed to get their easy dot pro wins then, man? <laughs> well, we didn't mention them because I don't care about them. Um, I, I assume the sponsors would prefer a world a Tour de France stage win. Yeah. Like, so yeah, well, uh, he seemed to hate the Vuelta. So let's not send him there again. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to him doubling up, Benji. I, if that's yeah. possible, go for it. What about you? Yeah, I agree on on the stuff you said. I would indeed look at David Gudu for the Tour mainly because I don't think they're going to send them to the Giro. And in all honesty, wouldn't you like to? I know you're a fan of having both Storer and Godou in the same breakaway, but is it not more efficient to send them to different races so you can win more races? It's right. You're right. Like, there's no point Bade and Storer coming first and second in Vuelta breaks if one of them could have been in another race, theoretically, for DSM. So, yes, that's why Storer to the Giro, and then maybe they can link up in the Vuelta, and that then allows Godou to focus on the hill races, one-day races earlier on. Uh, Or maybe even like a get a stage at a Dauphiné or a Tour de Suisse or something like that, David Gudu should be able to win win those sort of race, win a race there. And I think I think David Gudu he's good enough to win a Tour de France stage. Like he can win them. Yeah, and certainly. So there's a real realistic chance he can do that. And Tino, I think one of the reasons in twenty twenty one that it didn't happen is because Bogachar was straight up hunting for the last few mountain stage himself. And if exactly. GC's going for that, it's much harder for a rider in the breakaway to do so. And that's why those two stages, Portan, the one before Luz uh, or the other order, I don't know, uh, that they were also, like, in all honesty, going to GC. And it's going to be hard to win against Pogacar on those mountain stages, definitely. So that's partially one of the reasons I think that it failed in 2021 as well. But, hey, who knows what might happen in the 2022 Tour de France. Welter, I'm going with uh, Louis Askey. Miles Scottson, Stora, uh, off fresh off the back of his World Championships win, so it'd be in Rainbow with uh, David Guru and Stefan Kung if there's some good TT case for him. Uh, and I don't know. El- the problem is Lombardia, uh, etc. I'd still go to got to do well. He loves Spain. He loves winning in Spain. Won two last year. So but yeah, we don't know the parkour, Benji. Yeah, we don't. And uh, it's difficult to select a team then. And yeah, obviously it's going to be riders who did both the Giro and Tour that will likely end up in the Vuelta, just like every other team out there. But uh, I dare to say Godou plus Tora plus whoever the fuck is still wanting to ride a race at that point in the career in, in the in the year. And I don't know, does it influence the Italian classics? Do you look at the Vuelta and the Italian classics and say you do one of each, or do you think that people combine it as well? It's so hard to know when we don't know how much Pino can shoulder the burden of a Lombardia, you know, like Pino's one <laughs> one Lombardia, but we don't know if he can go yeah, and do that, then a shade of man focus was, of on something else. Yeah, uh, it, it's difficult to guess where Pino will get when yeah. it comes to his level, so it's impossible for us to... We know what what's gonna happen on that level, but hey, who knows? Rubey might be uh, sent to October again, and King might not need to ride that at the end of the year as well. So hey, the season can change. I'm setting the over under for World Tour wins, Benji, at five and a half. What's your take? Five and a half wins, World Tour wins. Yep, that's a lot. I'm going under. Ah, oh, it's so many unknowns. Uh, I'm going. I'm going the under. I feel like Kung could go winless. Like that's the thing. Kung is the big one here, and I think he he could. But then he wins one at Romandy or Swiss every year. That's the problem. But yeah, and does Demar come back in full force? 
they've they've averaged about five in the last five years a year. I, I, I'm going the under two, but it's close. So that's why I said it as a bit of a high one. What about uh, how many Grand Tour stages, Ben? Do you want, how do you think they'll go in monuments or Grand Tours, etc.? Maybe even have a hot take. I believe in two Grand Tour stages. I don't believe they'll win a monument. Um, I don't even think they will podium a monument. So, um, yeah, they only podiumed one this year, so it's not that far uh, of a hot day, either to say that. But I think that Godou got into that final group quite well at LBL. It's going to be hard to replicate that as well uh, for another year. And um, to be honest, I don't see the additions to the team changing the amount of monuments that they can podium, for example. I, um, I think that Storer will top 10 the Giro. I think, yeah, that's a good call. I think DeMar doesn't win a World Tour race. Um, Oof. I think Thibaut Pino wins a World Tour race. <laughs> Hot take. I, I think Thibaut Pino wins a tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love nah, to see it. ain't saying that. Um, I don't know. I just, I wish I had Manu van der Berger. I think Lewis Askey wins a race. Uh, like a, a proper, I think he wins a dot pro or above race, Lewis Aski. Not sure if that's really that hot a take, but I think he's pretty good. Uh, and I don't think they, I don't think they wear a leader's jersey for the entirety of the season in any race at all of any level. Oh, oh, <laughs> any, any, what? Any level, I don't think they wear a leader's jersey. That's that's a very hot take, even for our level. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Demar won the Boucle de la Mayenne, like GC, <laughs> <laughs> and he like he wins anyway. it, he wins it every year. So that's all, it's basically <laughs> impossible for that to happen. So, but I'm going with it. okay. Dot Pro, flaming hot take. Oh, okay. fuck, that's Dot Pro as well. How's that Dot Pro that race? He was, he was sprinting <laughs> against Niels Echoff and Christopher Halverson and Arvid de Klein. Like, how's that Dot Pro? Anyway, Turkey's Dot Pro as well. Same story. Yeah, people scared of COVID again, this year. Was there. So they I much. Um, yeah, I'm saying dot pro or above, they don't wear any of these jerseys throughout the whole year. What do you think about Walter? Do you see anything happening there? Getting 12th in Lombardia, getting 14th in the Giro. It's not exactly a bad result, you know? You're trying to get me to hype him up. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get you to hype him up. Like, the problem is, we're saying Storer top 10 Giro. I want Walter to top 10 the Giro, but then again, I don't want Walter to go for GC. I want Walter to go in breakaways and try and win a GC stage because he had trouble getting in breakaways in the past. He was able to do so in Sestula, ended up not winning that stage. But man, it has to come at some point a Walter stage win. So Walter is winning a World Tour stage. Absolutely no chance of that happening. <laughs> um, I just look at, like, for example, you think of all these wins that riders are, who are savvy. They pick I've, Catalonia, the last stage, huge break went, 20 guys plus, uh, maybe less, 15. And Volta and Reichenbach came third and fourth in the Sayer in that group. And um, Well, to be honest, against Mohoric and again, so not exactly the worst breakaway riders in the world. Yeah, but also, like, they're not Pagacha either, like, you also have teammates together. How do you let them go? I know, I know, but, you know, anyway, that's just something that I just don't see them in breaks all the time working really well. But that's our FDJ preview predictions for next year. I hope they have a better year. I um, I wonder what will happen with, with Damar, whether he'll, he'll bounce back after a massive 2020 and then a 2021. But he suffered from a lot of riding, you know, like Hindley and, who was also showed out at the Giro and then crashed back to reality uh, this year. But I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your predictions. And if you want to give us a review on podcast players, that helps out the pod a lot. Or if you're watching on YouTube, like it down below and we'll see you with the next one. Ciao.